G'day aspiring engineers. Today we're doing part 14 in this series of beginners tutorials in Fusion 360. Stick around. Part 14, this is part 14, we're going to be uh, learning a few new tricks. We're going to learn how to put a reference plane on an angle. We're going to do a little bit more complex sketching and I think you're up to that now because uh, you've been doing plenty of practice if you've been working through this series from the beginning. Uh, we're going to have a quick look at the hole tool to make a very simple hole and we're going to learn how to make a section cut so that you can see inside your model as you're working. As usual, the uh, 16 drawings are available you know, for a free download in a PDF. The link is in the description below there. Let's get started. So open up a new document and uh, turn on the origin of the document so that you can see the reference planes. Right click, sketch, create sketch. And choose the, uh, the plane at the bottom this time. We've got a reason for doing that. Hit the L key for the line and let's uh, make our sketch a little more interesting than the last ones. So uh, a vertical line, uh, got a, a, um, got a curve there, a little bit of a straight line, perpendicular, let's uh, make a straight line from here and I'll, get, I'll pick up a uh, tracking point from that corner when I've got it horizontal, I'll uh, click then another one over here, click and drag and finish the, uh, finish the sketch profile and uh, we're ready to put on a few constraints. I'm going to start with the uh, select tool and I want to make sure that I've got all the tangential constraints where they should be. This one's missing. So there's the tangent button down there. So one, two, three, four. Okay, that's good. Uh, I'm going to select this line here, hold down the shift key and get the other one on the other side. I want those to be equal and I want them to be, so I'm going to select them again, I want them to be collinear. D for dimension and this uh, curve on either side here is uh, has a radius of 5. This uh, line at the back of the part here has a length of 15. Overall length of the part from here to the end is supposed to be 45. And the distance between these two points of origin of curves is 25. Alrighty, now I'm going to get the S key uh, to get the select tool, grab hold of this thing and I want to move that over here somewhere and uh, we're going to orient this one, I want to get that line hold down the shift key to select the point of origin make those coincident, uh, then I want to make sure that I've got those things uh, nicely in the center so I'm going to get the D key from the point of origin to one of the sides make that half of 15, so I'm going to put 15 divided by 2 and uh, now we've got that part nicely lined up. Hit the E key to drop out of the sketch. We're in the extrude command. Choose the profile. And I want this to go uh, actually down. So I'm going to hit the negative And you'll see that this thickness of this thing is 5. And uh, there we have it. So I've got the point of origin on that front edge. And that's going to come in handy soon. Here yeah, I want to put uh, some fillets on. So on the S key I've already got the fillet tool in the model shortcuts. I'm going to select a few edges and uh, all of these ones have got a radius of 2. Right click, sketch, create sketch. I'm going to do this sketch on the top of the part. Uh, hit the L key for the line tool and uh, click and drag to make a curve. Now uh, this one you can see didn't get very many geometric constraints on it so I'll fix that up using the select tool. Select this one and make sure that it's horizontal. This one doesn't have a constraint on it so we'll make sure that that's horizontal. I'm going to put a uh, dimension on the curve here and this one has a radius of 2.5. Well, I can see that I need to have a, a tangential constraint between that line and the curve. D for dimension, put one on between the edge of the part and the centre and this one needs to be uh, 15 divided by 2 and then one from the centre of the part to the end of the part 
this one needs to be 5. We'll hit the E key to drop out of the sketch, choose the profile, minus 5, and we've got that one done. The next thing we need to do is put a, an angled plane on this edge here. So we right click, construct, and you can see that there's lots of uh, things to do with reference geometry. Planes, axes, and points. So ours that we need is a plane, and we need a plane at an angle. There it is, second in the list. And the dialog box comes up, and it's asking us to select a line. Well, this is the line that I want to select, and you can see that the plane appears in space, and the next thing that we need to give it is an angle. And so the angle that I want here is, let's have a look at 45. It's 45, but it's going the wrong way. So uh, I'm just going to back up and put a minus in front of that, and that puts the plane where we need it to be. Click OK, and there's our plane. Right click, sketch, create sketch. Now I'm going to choose that uh, angled plane that we've just put in there, and I can go ahead and use the, uh, the sketching tools again. And so uh, this is roughly what uh, the part looks like. And of course I'm going to use constraints to get all this uh, nicely uh, lined up. Notice that I was able to get the tangential constraints between the lines and the curve there. Uh, I'm going to use the D key to get the dimension tool. Uh, there's a dimension between the point of origin of the curve and the end of the part there where the angle plane meets the part. Uh, that one needs to be 17. I need to put a size on the curve here and that has a, uh, a radius of 15. I beg your pardon. That's got a radius of seven and a half. Then we need to make sure that uh, we've got it in the right spot. So I'm going to pick one of those straight lines, hold down the shift key and get the edge of the part and use the collinear constraint. And we've got that thing exactly where we need it now. Uh, so I'm going to hit stop sketch and E for extrude, choose the profile. I'm going to drag that arrow backwards a little bit this is not a cut, it's going to be a join. Well, we want to make sure that it's going to the right place and so it's going to go to object. Uh, I'll select the face here, give it an OK. Next thing we're going to do is put a hole in this face here. First of all, make a sketch, create sketch, and on the angled face of the part, hit the C key for the circle tool. I'm going to put a circle there and I purposely did it off-center now I'm going to hit the S key to get the Select tool. Choose that circle I just drew. Shift to get the other curve of the, the part. Make those things concentric. Use the D key to put a dimension on that circle, which has a diameter of 7.5. Hit the E key for the extrude. Choose the little hole. Put it back in towards the part. This is going to be a cut. So we'll extrude our hole and we'll make this one go to the object and we'll select this face at the back here. Alrighty, and then we click OK. Next we're going to uh, create a sketch. Sketch, create sketch, and we we'll want to choose the top of this, these little lugs on the side. Put it in position. Seek uh, for the circle tool. Uh, put a small one there and put another one over here. So there's our two circles. Hit the D key for the dimension tool, put a dimension on one of those, and uh, the radius of this one is, or well, the diameter is five, I should say. Hit the S key, get the select tool, select the circle, hold down the shift key and select the curve on the edge of the part, and make that concentric. Let's do the same on the other one. Get the circle, hold down the shift key to get the edge of the part, concentric. Now. I'm going to select the one that's already sized, hold down the shift key for the other one and make them equal. You might have to scroll down to find the equal constraint button there and uh, there we've got those ones done. The E key will get us out of the sketch and into extrude. I'm going to choose the two holes that we've just drawn. I'm going to get them going in the correct direction, through all. It's a cut and we click OK. The only thing about this part at this stage is that it's not really manufacturable. And uh, let's have a look inside this part and I'll show you what I mean. Uh, on the inspect menu there we've got section analysis. The, what it's asking us to select here is one of the reference planes. 
and that puts the cutting plane there and we can actually see inside. So there's really no way of making a hole like this. When you use a drill, you're going to end up with a, a pointed cone on the end of the hole. So let's, um, let's make a change here. I'll click OK and we can turn off the analysis uh, light bulb here and that turns the, ref the cutting plane on and off. So what I'm going to do first of all is go back to this feature which is the hole and then I'm going to right click and delete the feature. So let's turn off the, uh, the cutting plane and the hole tool can be found on the right click menu right there on the little bit to the right lower down. And here's how it works. We can uh, just select one of the face where we want the hole and you can see that this can be moved around. There is a, um, a point that appears while we're moving that thing and we can drop that thing right on that point if we want to. The other way to get that in position is to use a reference. We'll select the reference and choose the, uh, the curve at the top there and it makes it concentric. It's an automatic constraint. Nifty. So the hole type will keep it as a very simple one. There's a few, quite a few different uh, Quite a few different options there. We use the simple one. Um, we're going to give that a depth of 17 and we need to give that a size 7.5. And uh, there's the hole feature. Now let's turn the, uh, the cutting plane back on again and you can see that we've got a, uh, a hole with the, the conical point as if it was drilled. We can turn that uh, cutting plane off again. So pass done. Keep an eye out for the next one. See you that time.